this is an update about the Vasco Express TCP Hub connection option that is in the latest betas, latest beta of Vasco Tool. So in case you don't know how to get the beta, a few people have been asking me about this. So you go to, let's see, you go to the Vasco project site and log in. It will look slightly different for me now with this bar here because I'm an admin, but essentially it will look the same for you. And then when you're logged in, you can go to purchased files and then you should have the Vasco Tool beta all link here. And you just click on it and download it. And if you don't have this one, you can get any of the best tool versions, even the free ones. And once you have gotten that, that link will appear in purchased files. And also one thing that people get confused by, the date here is not the date of the beta, but it, the date when you made the so-called purchase. And uh, the link here will even, if you got it much earlier, point to the latest version. So this one will always give you the latest beta. So usually when you want to update, you just go in here and re-download the file. And the beta version has uh, a Linux version of this tool, a Windows version, and an Android version as an APK. So if you are on any of those platforms, then you can download and install it. and uh, Or just open the files on Android and install the APK, APK obviously. Okay, so now I have uh, the Express plugged in over USB, and if you have the latest beta from today, the 21st of February and onwards, uh, you can log in with Vasco to the Express, and then you can go to the firmware page, and you will have an update here. So then you just install the new firmware. Uh, you can also well, one thing to mention when you install a firmware like this is that it uses the bootloader, so it will not update the partition table and, or the bootloader itself. And uh, later I'm working on a lot of scripting, and if you want to update those as well, then you have to go to the ESP programmer here as well and uh, connect using the USB port up here. But uh, I will not talk about that here. So now we have updated the firmware, and uh, now if you connect to the Express, and go to the Express page on the side panel and go to the Wi-Fi tab. You can see that we have some more options here and one option here is the TCP hub, which is hard to disable right now. And as a reminder, I made a video about this a while ago. So essentially what the TCP hub does is that you can, it allows you to connect to this Express over the internet right now. So usually when you are on the same network, let me set it up, I can show that now. You will also see my Wi-Fi password, so we're going to set it in station mode and then enter the Wi-Fi here. And another reminder, when you've written the settings here, right it here, you have to make an, a reboot for most network related settings under Express for them to take effect. So then you can go to terminal and reboot. Now, one problem with Express when you do a reboot and you connect it over USB is that it will not disconnect and often when you click disconnect, the USB connection can hang and then you have to unplug and replug it. But anyway, now we are rebooted and we're disconnected and you see that in the panel here, we also have the Express D showing up over TCP here and that is because I'm sitting on the same network as this one. And when you do that, it will broadcast messages continuously that it's on the network and it will show up here. I can also show that if I unplug it, for example, then it will first the USB will disappear and then also the TCP option will disappear. And if I plug it in, then first the USB appears again. And once it connects to the Wi-Fi, it will it should also show up on the Wi-Fi here. And let's use the Wi-Fi connection this time. Now, if you go back to the settings. Now we connect to the Wi-Fi and we are connected over TCP. By the way, you can uh, disable the TCP uh, server right now so it doesn't show up there if you would like to connect and not use that server. Now, the thing when you connect like this is that you are assuming that you're sitting on the same network. So you are connecting from Vasktool over the Ethernet or the Wi-Fi to the Express. But uh, that might not necessarily be the case. So maybe you have the Express sitting somewhere and you want to reach it from the Internet. And one way to do that is to use uh, the so-called TCP hub that the Vesk tool has supported for a while now, and now also the Vesk supports, the Vesk Express supports. Now, what that does is that you tell the Express to connect to the TCP hub, and then you can from anywhere with an interconnection reach it. That is assuming, of course, that the Express sits on a Wi-Fi that has an internet connection. And for me, this has been mostly useful when I do 
remote support, for example, when I have people, then I can just um, give them an, an express that will connect to the internet, and then I know that as long as they're in the range of some Wi-Fi, they will log in and uh, make that connection so I always can reach it. So, how does that work? Then, uh, in order to get it to work, you have to configure the TCP hub. So, we just start by enabling it. And uh, by default, I have a TCP hub running on this URL, on this port. And then the ID and password. So, this is actually, this is very simple. You can really enter anything here. So, you can enter any ID that has more than three characters or uh, numbers. And uh, you can enter any password. And uh, this just tells, this will just connect to the hub and connect under those credentials. And that just tells you that if someone tries to reach the hub and connect and enters the same things, it will be able to connect. So you don't need to make an account or anything. And it's also quite unencrypted. So don't use any password here that you care about. Well, you shouldn't do that in general. You use the same password for many things, but you should be extra careful with this one. Now, so let's just... Uh, make up a number so or some name i will actually keep the default one or call it express for something in case someone else already connects under it that's also a thing by the way someone already is connected under your name and you connect then you will throw out that connection i think and same likewise if you have a very simple or common name and someone else connects it will throw you out and uh, you can leave the password blank or you can just do anything like i will do one two three four in this one i will write and same thing here, when I've changed those settings, I have to do reboot, so do terminal and then reboot. And you can see when we connect to the Wi-Fi, it will actually disconnect me before doing a reboot. Now, if we go to the welcome page, and it, this will look exactly the same on the mobile version, because we are using the panel here. Then we can go to the scan menu, and then we can do connect TCP hub, if we haven't connected before. And then we can enter express 4 and 1, 2, 3, 4 and now we are connected and it looks the same as before but we are not connected over directly to the server now we are connected over the internet so even if this one wouldn't sit on my local network and express as a connection I could do this now another interesting thing is that when you do a TCP app connection it, uh, anytime you do that it will actually remember that you have connected to that uh, ID and port at some point. So what you can do is you can do scan and you can do ping TCP hub and then all of the old connections that they have made at some point in time will show up here and you can uh, connect to any of them if they are live. Uh, these are some experiments I did before that will they're probably not working because they haven't timed out yet but it will only scan the ones that you have previously connected to. And we see that the Express 4 shows up here and you can do connect here as well. And then you are connected. So that is really convenient. And then when you are connected over Canvas, so you can do the configuration on your motor and everything. Uh, another update to the TCP in the Express is that before, um, let me connect again. Let's see why doesn't that it should show up here couldn't read the configuration yeah that's strange do ping tcp up again yeah i think something happened to it yeah we'll investigate that for now we'll just unplug it and plug it in again and hopefully it works this time So now we got the T here and we can, yeah, let's do the hub again and connect. And this time it worked. Now, one difference from before as well now is that before, when you were in station mode, it would actually have a limited amount of retry. So if you are at home and you walk away and it loses the Wi-Fi connection, it will only retry up to 20 times or so to reconnect and it will give up. And now it will do an infinite amount of retries with the latest firmware. So hopefully that will always reliably connect it once you are getting back in range of the Wi-Fi I have configured here. So, yeah, hope that is useful. Okay, so here's a small correction from a demo before. I tried to figure out what happened there when it disconnected and it turned out it ran out of memory. So, 
what the reason was that if you go to Express, then I had both the local TCP server and the TCP hub connection active. Both of those will start their own thread with, it on, with their own stack. If I only activate one of them, it will only start one of the threads at boot. And we also had Bluetooth active, so and that was simply using too much RAM on it, and I think that's why we couldn't make any more TCP connections. So I disabled Bluetooth, did right again, and restarted, and now I have uh, been trying to reconnect a few times, and then it seems to run fine now. And if you do type hardware underscore status, you can also do helper to see all the commands. Then you can see the heap member counters and the heap min value is the minimum amount of memory that it has reached at some point that of free memory and this one was at like one kilobyte or so and that means we probably couldn't make any more tcp connections at that point so yeah that was that's something to watch out for as well if you activate too many things and also start to run some scripts it will the memory will be a bit limited uh, I can probably fix that at some point. I mean, I did a big change. I did a few tweaks to the Bluetooth settings and that made a big difference. So hopefully when it's when I'm done with the beta, I can make it a bit less memory intensive.